Well, I have lived in about eight countries and 30 plus cities so far, but this is the first time, surprisingly, that I'm presenting to audience in Chennai. I'll quickly introduce myself. I am Abhinav Jain, a co-founder of a B2B channel engagement and experience solutions company, Almond. Uh, though my love and affair for metaverse and related technologies goes back for like 15 years, but just alone in the last two years, I've studied and read about 50 or so white papers and ebooks on the metaverse, spoke to about 300 plus global leaders regarding metaverse and their vision for the metaverse, and about 800 or so blogs. And I also run a global community of metaverse proponents and opponents of about 4,500 members, and we call them MetaMonks. So today, I am going to share with you my best of the best learnings with these discussions so far happened. And I also have a parental advisory for all of you, and that goes like this. Because the next 15 minutes are going to definitely transform your thoughts for the future. About 2,500 years ago, in Indo-Aryan language called Prakrit, a term was coined called Anekantvad, which means multi-perspective and many-sidedness. And it has very beautiful moral story attached to it. And the story goes like this. A group of blind people heard that a very strange animal called elephant was brought into their town. They have never heard of it. They have never seen it, of course, because they are blind. So what they thought, they said, let's make a group. Let's go and experience the animal by touching, which they were capable of, right? So they went. And all of these you know, people, they just groped the animal. And each of them found out one body part to touch, right? So the one which you know, held the trunk of the elephant said that this is being like a thick snake. The one who held the ear of the elephant said that this is like a fan, old fan, right? The one who held the, uh, you know, the leg said that this is like a tree trunk or a pillar, right? And then the one in the, left, in the top right, which held the, uh, the tail of the animal, said that this is like a rope, right? So my question to you is, were they right or wrong? They were, they could be anything. Yes, they were right as well as wrong. But this example depicts a very powerful stuff, which says that the perception is limited by the context that you have. So of course they were right because they were just touching that body part of the animal. But since they did not have the complete context of it, they were just imagining up to what they knew. 2,500 years fast forward, this elephant is the metaverse today. We just know a limited context of it, and we are trying to define with what we know. So in the current context, what do we think of metaverse? Well, there is a very literal definition, which says that metaverse is a single unified immersive internet. Very tough word to understand, but it doesn't end here. It also says that the internet which you can experience only through devices like VR glasses, AR glasses, or probably some high-end mobile phones or such devices, right? Let me give you a very basic example of it. Imagine we have three friends sitting in three different cities, you know, Chennai, London, and probably New York. And all of these three, if they want to discuss something, what they would do? They would probably go on a WhatsApp call or on a you know, video call or something like that. But if I ask you to say, how would they experience something together? That means they might be working on a product which they want to see from all the sites. They might be working on an idea which they want to curate together. How would they do that, right? That is a perfect gateway to understand what Metaverse can offer. Imagine if these three friends could come onto their avatars through the headset and probably experience something, explore something, and do it together. This is just example, and I'm not calling this Metaverse, right? 
let me give you another example which will be more easy for you. If you have to shop something today, what would you do? You go to a website, right? You just search for the kind of cloth you're looking for, right? And then you'll scroll, scroll, scroll. Probably you like the color, you like the size, you like the design, you'll take it, right? Then it comes to your home, you'll probably try it. It might look good on you, it might not. And then you'll probably return, which is 30% of the time. And then, you know, you'll probably buy or probably you'll change, whatever. Now, imagine the same experience when I give you in a showroom where actually you could go without moving an inch away from your seat. And how is that possible? That's possible with the technologies that Metaverse is bringing onto the table right now. And this is happening, right? But trust me, that's not all the Metaverse is, and that's not the only thing that Metaverse is. And again, what I'm presenting here is, today with the current limitation of context or the knowledge that I, or probably, you know, grouping all of us together, we have, right? But there are also things that are not truly metaverse, and definitely not the last one. Because online, you would see pretty much everything is being called as a metaverse, and you have to pay very close attention to what you're reading and learning. Now, one thing if I want you to remember from this entire definition and experience of metaverse is the immersive experience. That means you are part of the experience, right? without moving away from your you know, couch conveniences, as we say, right? So we understood what metaverse is or what metaverse-related technologies are, but even more important thing to understand is that why is this being talked so you know, proudly right now? Everyone is talking about something they're doing in metaverse, right? And the reason is, which you'll now understand, is some data and insights that I've curated with the learnings that we have. By now, we have seen that in every 15 to 20 years, technologies have brought the experience closure to you. What do I mean by that? So about in 1960, we used to experience a game in stadium, which was probably 300 feet away from you. Then in 20 years, a television game which brought this experience to close to you about 10 feet away. Then laptop or computer came, which brought it to three feet. Then mobile, which brought it just near your body, and then now we are getting via glasses, which is brought into your two inches. And soon, you will see in the next couple of years, there will be AR lenses, in fact, they are now being tested, or brain chips, which will actually give you the experience right through your eyes. This is very powerful, and this is a pattern, right? Second thing, if you look at the world's population right now, okay, about 60% or less are less than 40 years. 60% or you know, about 40 years. And more than 50% of this is less than 20 years, right? And this is what we call the Gen Z and you know, uh, millennials and all the good names that we give to this you know, amazing generation, right? And they have a very interesting experience patterns. This is the data from a McKinsey report, which says that 75% of Gen Z and millennials wants to experience things, not possess them. So I've grown up, you know, hearing from my family, you have to own a home, you have to own a car. Well, I'm, I'm very confident that my, my daughter, she will say, I don't need to own a home, probably I'll just rent it out, right? And this is already happening in the West, right? Even more insightful details. <laughs> About 70% of the total consumer base, which the company surveyed, they said that digital identity is equally or even more important for them. What does that mean? Your Facebook profile, your avatar, your Instagram profile is, for 70% people, is more important than the physical look alike or physical, you know, how they look, how they experience and everything. And this is also driving to a very interesting conclusion, which is about 69% of the youth says that they are buying, they are experiencing because of the fear of missing out. Now, if you're combining all these three, right, the experience which is coming closer to you, the population which is driving these patterns, and these amazing insights, 
I think we all will conclude to one thing that future will be driven by digital experiences, right? And in fact, I would not be exaggerating if I would say it's not the future. In fact, a lot of good things are happening in the current with the digital experiences. Industrial training. A data or a report from Global Industry Report says that about 